Uh, well, thank you all for being here today. Welcome to New Winston Museum Salon Series tonight. Uh, we're talking about trains and, and specifically trains in Winston Salem and their kind of influence on the local community over the last, well, really 142 years, I think. 142 years that there has been a train running through this town. And uh, my name is Chris Jordan. I'm the Director of Education and Programming here at New Winston Museum. And this is all part of our two things really, it's our salon series, which is our monthly programming series, uh, and this is the last one of the year that is, has to do with, well no I shouldn't say this, the second one that has to do with transportation. Next month is a, actually a very big one that we're having um, called Sisters in Flight. And I hope you all come back for that. We have two former pilots, female pilots in Piedmont Airlines, along with a, a former flight attendant at Piedmont Airlines. And it will be moderated by Wake Forest University's Michelle Gillespie, who is uh, just wonderful. So we're very much looking forward to that. And that'll be rounding out our salon series for 2015. Um, all of our programming will pick back up again in January. And if you want more information on any program we have going on for the rest of this year, uh, we have flyers in the back that talk about the about five or six more programs we have this year. And then we will be updating our website and printed materials soon in the new year with the, a very wonderful slate of uh, programs we have already scheduled. That being said, I left my sheet somewhere, but I can introduce him with that. <laughs> um, I want you to also make note that we have membership information in the back. We are privately funded. We receive no municipal funding at the Museum, and uh, we really rely on the support of our community. Uh, in small, the small donations and, and large donations are definitely welcome. Um, so our speaker tonight is Dr. Jeff Miller. He is a trainaholic, a self-described trainaholic. <laughs> he is a trained photographer. He's taken over 8,000 pictures of uh, locomotives and, and railroads across the country. He is an ophthalmologist by training and career, but I think, um, is it safe to say your passion is in trains? Um, he received his first model train at three years old. His dad used to take him to see the trains and he used to ride uh, go streetcar riding in Baltimore with his aunt. So uh, suffice it to say, he is, uh, has a long history of uh, train enthusiasm. And he's a uh, longtime member of the National uh, Railroad Builders, Model of Builders uh, Association and a, a founder of the, the uh, southbound Model Rail Rovers. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they were very gracious enough to come here tonight and set up the wonderful display you see in the lobby. Please take time if you have, if you need to use the restroom. Um, the restrooms are at the entrance. Take a minute, take a look at the railroad, maybe run it back and forth a little bit. It's, it's a lot of fun um, for the child and all of us. So without further ado, uh, thank you very much, Jeff, for being here today, and it's all yours. Okay. Thank you, Grace. I want to thank everyone for making it out tonight and uh, being here. And we will take a look at trains around Winston Salem. And we're going to stay inside Winston Salem. We're not going to go drifting all over the country. Uh, I've been in every state shooting train pictures, and so I, we're not going all over. We're going to stay right here at home. And one of the things we want to talk about the most in talking with Chris and what we were going to do was to show the influence of the railroad on the community and just all the different places that it really has touched our lives for the last 140 years. Saying that, I'll give you a disclaimer. Anything I say is my own opinion. Do not reflect the opinion of the museum, the uh, Department of Transportation, the city of winston Salem, Norfolk Southern, winston Salem Southbound, CSX, or the Kardashians. So we'll move on. <laughs> okay. So we want to take a look at this and see what's going on. And we gratefully, I am very happy to have the new Winston Museum in our community. I don't think a lot of people realize what a tremendous budding asset that we have here because nothing really tells our story after Old Soap. And there's a lot of story here. So one of the things we want to talk about is what some of the things that were done here, both in an artistic manner and an innovation manner, that really came from here. And, and truthfully, part of the whole country is in debt to us. Anyway, the trains, can you imagine if you had gotten up to come down here today, and the only way to get down here was to get the horse out and hook it up 
and come down in a wagon across a dirt road. And this is, well, we got a hot time in that here with the fire trucks. But anyway, it, this is how you did everything. Uh, the horse and wagon was the mode of transportation from before the Civil War till well afterward and into the 1910s. So how did you get in it? Think how long it would take to go to Greensboro to do something. The average horse and wagon did about 20 miles a day. That's about the best you could get. Mm -hmm. So you can picture, you're here in town, you're a merchant, and you need to sell a desk that you made at your furniture company to somebody in Greensboro. How'd you get over there? That's how you got over there. So it was a real transportation burden trying to get around. Remember the roads were not paid, and in bad weather, what did you do? I mean, just think about doing anything, going to church, going to, going to visit grandma, just whatever, whatever you did, that's how you did it. So it was a major problem, and wagons were the major uh, force of transportation up until the railroads came. So the railroads, we see a transition here from the horse and wagon to the modern era of an SD, I guess SD40 up there. And we see the, the train running. And this represents a huge change in lifestyle, what we could do, what we couldn't do, and our whole way of life was changed by this. The influence of this is probably as great or greater than the computer age. So it certainly gave us freedom, transportation, goods, and, and that sort of thing, and far as economics. It got Reynolds to come here. Why did Reynolds come to Lisa? There's good rail transportation. Why did, it, why did a lot of things happen here? So that gives you an idea of the transition there. The railroads came, and we'll see. Uh, the first railroad was the Richmond and Danville, and it came down to Greensboro. And the second thing that got built was really from Raleigh over here down to Salisbury, and that was the North Carolina Railroad. And that was built by the state, uh, catch it here we go, uh, it was the North Carolina Railroad. And it is still owned by the North Carolina Railroad from Greensboro to Charlotte, it is actually owned by the state of North Carolina and to which they pay rent to use that track. We came over to Winston-Salem in 1873 was the Northwestern Railroad, built from Greensboro to Winston. It was started out as a narrow gauge railroad, we'll get into all the detail, but it started out as a narrow gauge for those of you who understand that part. And that's what they started out with. It was never completed that way and became standard gauge. Uh, while it was under construction. And the line also went down from Greensboro to uh, Sanford and, and on from there as the Cape Fear and Yankton Valley Road. And it expanded on out to Rural Hall. And in that time period, you can see what was 1886 to 1887. And that later became what is known as the Atlantic and Yadkin, or commonly called the AY. And we will talk about that in a moment. And it went on to Mount Airy and <coughs> finally came from Rural Hall back to Winston as the Northwest North Carolina River. Well, things kept going on and we moved on to North Wilkesboro and uh, we're catching every click. Uh, and then we built from Winston-Salem down to Salisbury, and that became the North Carolina Midland Railroad. And if you look, go into some records and stuff, you'll find out that that's still on the tax records. It's leased out for 100 years, but it's leased out to First Southern Railway, now Norfolk Southern. But anyway, that's the track that runs out Stratford Road. It was originally built as the North Carolina Midland Railroad. Well, by 1905, things had kind of consolidated up, and some of these small railroads went away, and we saw the North Carolina Railroad was here. We had Southern Railway here and here. The Southern actually leases the North Carolina Railroad. 
And we had built the line, the Norfolk and Western had built down as the uh, run over the Salem originally in 1905 through Walnut Cove to Winston Salem. So we looked complete here. We see a lot of things that were pretty complete, but we didn't have a way to go south. That was the piece that was missing. So we ended up with the Winston Salem southbound coming about in 1910. Now we became a commerce center a very important commerce center because we could send stuff this way, Connotation Act goes west to Asheville, we could go north to Roanoke, we could go east to Greensboro, Raleigh, and on east and on up the east coast. So we could go in all four directions here. We are one of the few cities in the state that that is still a possibility. The High Point Times Bill didn't came along later and I just kind of mentioned that in there and some of you know about it. And by 2015, this is what happened with all the consolidation and change. We see that the Norfolk Southern, which is, was come about in 1982, was really the joining of the, of the uh, Norfolk and Western and Southern Railroad into the one large corporation known as Norfolk Southern. Uh, and they own pretty much everything around us. Uh, they have this piece of track. They run that way. They're everything except the Winston Salem Southland. We'll talk about it in, in a moment. So the oldest structure that we know of around uh, is this depot from the 18 early 1870s in Carsville. This is the oldest thing left on the line between Raleigh and all the places around. This is the oldest depot, and it is in Carsville. So here we have a shot of Winston-Salem and what it looked like after the railroads came in. Now, this picture is a little hard to say exactly where it is, but from several structures in the background that we know about, we know it was Winston. And notice the big stacked locomotives, and uh, the station was right in here. And for those of you who know, this is where Blue Street kind of ran across. For those of you who remember that, it's gone now. And this was right behind Reynolds Tobacco Company. It was here, downtown. And one person who really made this community, what we forget about the man, is none other than Colonel Freeze. Now, Henry, Francis Henry Freeze was a really great man for the community. He was a Moravian. He uh, influenced it because he started out by suggesting that we build a railroad between Winston-Salem and Roanoke, which became the Roanoke and Southern. He financed it. He also started Rista Mills down here in Old Salem. He did more stuff than what we can imagine. So just remember his name. He was a great industrialist. He was way ahead of his time, and he was very innovative. Among of his innovations was putting lights, electric lights, in a plant. That's something we don't think about. But in that time frame, having light meant you could work later. I mean, it's already dark now. It's been dark for probably an hour. I mean, you had to send workers home if it was daylight. You didn't have any other way to light up the place. He did it. Rista Mills down here, a block or two up this way, is where he uh, was able to. Uh, and you trying to signal me? <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, he was the one who did all of that and was really a genius of his time. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, this is the engine that came down on the run open southern. And uh, there's a car from picture, a car, what they looked like, the open vestibule car is what we call them. And this came down from Rona and allowed us a way to go north. This is downtown. It's kind of in the same place as the other picture uh, that I showed you originally, but it's changed a lot. This building is still here, some uh, this is that one. A lot of these are still, some of these are still here. Most all of this is gone. But this was downtown Winston when the trains started coming in and when they were doing stuff. Okay, and here is another shot. I'm trying to figure out one of the buildings. This building, well, I was going to show you one of the buildings. But anyway, but they're still there. Some of these back here are still there. Reynolds was off over here. And there is another shot. This was shot probably from about the Blues Creek, or excuse me, the Blues Street Bridge. Uh, that was downtown across the railroad yards. And here we see a track plan of what there was. 
And this is from 1927, and we had a Southern Railway coming in this way, the Norfolk and Western came in this way, and the NW had a yard down here, Southern Railway had a yard up here. And I should say, it was from a 27, but my guess is it's really 22. That's just, think 1922. Anyway, the southbound was here, they came down here, and they worked the tar branch up here. The tar branch today, you can walk on it, that's the walking trail through Old Salem, right there by the Salem Bypass. So they had that, and another kind of picture showing, kind of a close-up shot. NNW had a turntable here, no roundhouse, notice that. Southern had a turntable here, no roundhouse. There was no roundhouse downtown. And the freight station, this track is gone. About everything you see here is gone, about 100%. And there is the bridge. And that bridge had a purpose. The streetcar came across this bridge and went down this way. And somewhere or another here, it went underneath the railroad. And I had to get the streetcars across and look at streetcars. But this is what was downtown uh, by about 1922. And freight station, freight station there, and the passenger station sat up here. And here it is an aerial photograph, some were taken probably in the 40s. Uh, and here we can see the track layout. You can see this Blue Street Bridge right here. And that was a very vital link because the streetcar went across it, and more importantly, later years with cars, and she came up here drove this way, you went up a tunnel here, and the tunnel brought you all the way out over here to the passenger station. So that was kind of neat. And I remember many a time driving through there to call stuff, oh, 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 like that, your dad, dude. little kid in the car, and it's echoing off the walls. So in the southbound, went this way, going to the south. This is not really looks that way, but that's south. And really a neat place. Another picture, we're lucky to have these aerial shots, here we see the now gone Bailey plant for Reynolds. We see uh, the Southern Railway freight station was here, located right behind Reynolds Tobacco Company. And here was the Southern Railway freight station. NW was over here, and the turntable was here for the N and W. And we can tell the stuff was done early. This bridge is still there, built in 1916, when the Roanoke and Southern, NW, came into Winston-Salem. And they were modernizing downtown. We had to have a way to get stuff to, to different places. So they built this bridge. A lot of us have driven through here. This used to go down to the tunnel. And that tunnel down there was how you got to the depot. And here is another picture of the N and W yards. We see the water tank that was here. Uh, there's the Blue Street Bridge. I don't remember what year they tore that down. but I, I know it's gone, but I don't know what year. That was probably somewhere around 2000. Uh, but that bridge was there. This is how they cold downtown, for those that are rail fan type. Uh, they just had a coaling trestle like this, and this is where they cold engine. They didn't have a big coaling tower <coughs> downtown. This is the first Southern Railway Depot. It is still, it was standing, and it got built around because they needed more space. They actually built that a little bit bigger. And uh, this is the original part of the depot. It was kind of over here. And they did expand it out, and it's kind of hidden in that shot, but it was here. And that was the original Southern Railway <coughs> passenger station, and this became the freight station. Well, the freight station lasted many years, uh, and this picture taken in the 70s shows some passengers, some freight cars in here, and I'm sure you can see some other buildings there that were not on the railroad, but had to do with the city. Whoops, a little too fast. Uh, anyway. Here we see a Southern Railway engine. We know that it was after the Wachovia building because it's sitting there, so it gives an idea when it was. Uh, there is that same freight station again. The center part here was the original station in Winston. Just added on to on both sides. Now, along about 1906, or so, they built the Winston-Salem Union Station, and that's this building. And it was a pretty modern looking structure. When you look at it there, you see the tower structure here. Kind of a little bit out of place for Winston-Salem. But it had this Spanish architecture to it. And this was at the corner of 3rd and Patterson Street. And here is a plot of showing you what was there. 
We had a station, we had a, a baggage room, an express office. And the railroad did a lot of business other than just carrying passenger express was the main thing. How did I get something from here to Greenville? I sent it by express. Uh, I'm sure you all heard of REA, Railway Express Agency, and a lot of stuff went through them. They were the, more or less the people who handled express. And we see down here another important picture of city fuel, coal and wood. And here we see a coal dump. Coal was what made the community run. It's very difficult to picture a world without electricity. How did you heat your home? How did you run your plant? Coal. You had your own coal fire boiler. I mean, some of you may remember having a coal truck come to your house and dump the coal in your basement. And it should some of them did. <laughs> but that's what they did. So how did it get there? They came to a coal dump, and a truck would come under here, or a horse and wagon, or however you want to do it. And they would take the coal, the coal out of the hopper cars, drop it into whatever it was going into, and that's how they would load up trucks or wherever it had to go. So, Another view of the depot. From the other side here, there's streetcar tracks kind of over here. And obviously this is from the 20s. Well, and another shot of the depot, a very kind of grainy looking shot. But they notice they only had one or two tracks there. They didn't have much space there. It was just too small. And now you had three railroads using it. You had the Norfolk and Western, the Southern, and now the Winston Southern Southbound, also using that depot. So it, it was just too small. Now, backing up a little bit in time, around 1890, Freeze, who we've talked about, started the Salem and Winston Electric Company. Originally, they got power by using carbide gas. And carbide gas uh, was done, I, and some of you may correct me on this, was dropping carbide pieces in water, and this produced a gas, something like the carbide lanterns that were used uh, in the mines. And this gas was inflammable and it was piped out to the factories and a few homes of the very wealthy in Salem. And the byproduct of that was a tarry substance. And that substance was dumped into the creek and that's where we got the name Tar Branch. So that's how all that came from, was from the Tar Branch. Well, in 1898, he began the Winston-Salem Railway. And what that was, was the streetcar system, uh, an electric company. Uh, and uh, in 1902, we had the Freeze Manufacturing, probably got to hold it up here somewhere. Uh, the Freeze man manufacturing power. And this was not only produced power, but also was his knitting mills to run Arista, Arista mills, which later became part of Haynes. And that's where the Arista mills came from. Like I said, Freeze was into everything. And the hardest thing to follow, how popular were the streetcars? In 1909, 1.7 million rides were done. Think about that a 1.7 million people paid a fare to ride one of Freeze's streetcars. And here we look at one, uh, and we don't really know, and I'll give my plea, we need a color picture. Anybody got one? Find me, do something. Find me a color streetcar picture. This was one of the first cars, and we do not know for sure what color this was. And we just don't know. It could have been red and it could have been green. And somebody might figure that out. We figured this was probably cream or white up here. But we don't know. So we've never seen a color picture. And here we see a cars going through Old Salem. And what they did was they had a single track in places they had passing set up so that they could pass one car around the other and one on the same track. And this is in Old Salem. Here we see downtown the corner of Fourth and Liberty. And we had the open cars, and they were very popular. They, during the summer months, they worked really well until it got too cold. They did not have any heating, they were not closed in any way, and people rode those all over town. And that's how you went anywhere, as opposed to the horse and wagon. Notice no cars, just horse and wagons. 
So they got you in, and like I said, this is the corner of Fourth and Liberty. I can't remember what the building is. Well, I can't remember what that was called. The Phoenix Hotel. Huh? The Phoenix Hotel. The Phoenix Hotel. Uh, and that building was on that corner. Here we see a car coming up, Liberty <laughs> Street. Question, David, what was yes. the fare? What was the fare? Probably a penny or two, at the most, a nickel. Nickel rides are pretty common. Nickel seemed to be kind of a common denominator. Uh, we don't really have a fare chart, but we assume it was the same everywhere. This is coming up Liberty Street from 4th, looking north. Uh, and here's another shot of a car coming. And another shot, I was, you know, I'm kind of in the street car, so I admit it. The hotel was here. Belk Stevens, there's an old name. You know, we just had the belt now, but it was Belk Stevens back then. Right on downtown Winston-Salem. And this was in, probably in the late 20s. The reason for it is, early 30s, is I don't, somebody might pick out a car, but notice the car changed. This is now an enclosed car. And here is a better picture of the car. Now, we had a, a friend of ours said that this was orange and this was cream from his memory. And that's what here. The problem we had with that car was it could not go underneath this street. Uh -oh. And that was a problem because the street was like this. And it couldn't make go underneath the railroad track there. The railroad said, you ain't crossing us. I mean, that was just a real no-no. So with this kind of shape, the car was too long to make it. And it helped bring about the demise of street cars because they couldn't run them there. Uh, and here is the trolley barn on Sprague Street. And they, and they did have the cars in there. This is a picture been around a long time in a lot of places. They also did one other thing with the electrics. They had these little motor cars and they hauled cotton, tobacco, whatever they needed to haul through town. Here we see this is cotton on here. And you see the pole going up to catch the trolley bar. And they just hauled some freight. And I like to emphasize one thing. This is a trolley car. The other thing, we're trolley cars. We call these things that got four wheels, rubber tires, trolleys. They are not trolleys. Mm -hmm. By definition, a trolley has this device up here on the top that rides on the wire, and that is known as a trolley. <coughs> Every time the city says, oh, we have these trolleys running around, nah, 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 that's what we call them. So, <laughs> but that's really what the story was. To order to have a trolley vehicle, you got to have something overhead. This is the map of the streetcar system. And uh, we see that here was downtown. It went all the way out to 29th Street, out Liberty Street, to about where the airport is. That's 27th is where the yard is. I don't know why they went to there, but that's where they went. Uh, where you see it cross here, it went under or over the railroad. There was never a real crossing. Uh, out here, it went up toward Reynolds High School and stopped. This is Hawthorne Roads here, and the, tra and the train went up Hawthorne Road. Uh, it came down to Apple Street. I don't know what was down on Apple Street unless there were just some people living there. I, I don't know why they went to Apple Street. And that's where they went. Uh, and like I said, they came up, came up here to North Hawthorne Road. Uh, they went up that way. They came up this way to City Hospital, which, is the major, which was the only hospital in town at the time. And so they went out to City Hospital. And then they came all the way down Main Street. And right here, they did have a crossing with the winston Salem southbound. Uh, they came on out Sprague Street, and all the way out here to, the Nissen, to Nissen Park. Now, what the railroad, what the streetcar companies did was, they said, hey, uh, we got to get business on Saturday and Sunday when people aren't going to work. So almost every streetcar company built something at the end of a line to get people to ride it since they would go out there. And they went out to Nissen Park. At Nissen Park, it was very interesting. They had a little train ride. This was the train ride. It was also a streetcar line. And for those who know, it was a two-foot gauge line. And they rode people around here. Back here in the back, uh, somewhere in the picture, there is the regular track. But they came out there to take people. This was a Sunday hour. What are you going to do on Sunday? You picked up your family, your girlfriend, whatever. And he said, let's go out to Nissan Park. And they had not only rides, they had swings, and I don't know what else was out there, but it was there. And that worked with them. Well, along about 
1905, we had a, another innovation come about, once again, promoted by Freeze, and that was the idea that we need to go south of here. We cannot be considered a community of industrialists, which is what they want to be, until we have a way to go in all directions. In 1905, they started a charter for the Winston Salem Southbound Railway. Okay? And here is the early history of the railroad. In 1891, they proposed a railroad called the Winston and Wakeboro, and that didn't quite happen. Uh, the plan was to haul early freight of coal, fertilizer, lumber, cotton, agricultural products. And in 1905, a charter was actually issued to the Winston Salem Southbound Railway. And there was a lot of talk about where this railroad would actually go. There was a lot of proposals about where it would go. But the motivating factor as to where it went was it would form a connection, remember our grown open southern and NNW came down, would provide a straight shot to Charleston, South Carolina, for what was then, pre-World War I, coal burning need. And they viewed that as a major source of traffic that could make it profitable. So we looked at that coming about, and there's all your incorporators, Henry Fries, uh, Francis Fries, and look, James Gray and, and H. Elders around, because there's a town called Elder, Norfleet, some other people that you may run. And they were allowed to build a railroad and a telegraph line. That was the other side of this. They also could offer communication services. And they did that through Forsyth, Dating, uh, uh, Guilford, Randolph, Montgomery, Stanley County, Cabarrus, all the way to Charlotte, and all the way down to South Carolina. That was in their charter agreement. That's what they proposed. And Colonel Freeze, Colonel, uh, excuse me, Colonel Cornell, was chosen as chief engineer. You may wonder, who, who was that? They're here at Cornell University. Same guy. Same thing. Okay. And they called him Colonel. He actually had never been in the military, but they did that out of respect. That was something the Southerners did. And they made a survey with the help of the Atlantic coastline in Norfolk and Western. They did not want Southern to be their partner. Why? Because Southern Railway had been in Winston Salem. Southern did not have a good reputation. The railroads were, were kind of notorious about favoring people and rates. If you had a factory out here and you made furniture, and now you need to ship that furniture to Richmond, the railroad would say, okay, we'll get your car sometime. If they didn't like you, that sometime could be months. You couldn't <laughs> ship your furniture. You couldn't ship your tobacco, you couldn't ship your textile. You had to wait on the railroad to get you a car. So we viewed this as a way of getting another partner, another source of some ways giving cars, and when you got cars, you are able to ship. Without cars, you couldn't ship. Remember, no trucks. So they did it, and they, uh, with the help of the Atlantic Coastline, uh, Spencer, Samuel Spencer, named down here for the Spencer shops down here. They wanted in, but they didn't get in. And uh, in 1906, uh, Francis Price passed away, and Henry took over to do the work. Uh, Things took what they call, we used to have what we call, I guess today we call them recessions, but I don't know what they called them back then. That they called financial crises or downturns in the economy. In 1906, things went down the toilet, as we know, and they couldn't build that. They, there was just no money available. So that became a problem. And they had these crises, they used to call them the copper crises and the silver crises and a few other things. Uh, and it had to do with politics and the amount of return they could get. And they came about by agreeing that they couldn't do it on a 4% return on investment. Today, we would jump up and down with them. Okay. In 1908, the economy got worse. And the Whitney Reduction Company, now, we, I don't want to get off on the southbound too far. They were down at Baden, North Carolina. And they, they were aluminum producers. And that's what they did. And that was the main thing that went on at Baden. We've all heard about the aluminum plant Alcoa down there and all the battles in the paper about uh, whether they should get rights to keep running the dams and everything. But they were a major, major producer. And they were going to be who the railroad would serve as it went south. 
and they got in financial trouble. Uh, what's important is that when the southbound got going and we were able to get Baden going, it helped us build the Panama Canal. Came as a direct result of the Winston Salem southbound because they could get the operation at Baden going, and that's where they tested and figured out here, tested there, how to, to de develop a vaccine to defeat yellow fever, which was killing people in Panama by the, by the, just the drones, the droves down there. So we had to do something about that, and that came about kind of a Winston-Salem thing. Anyway, in, June, in 1909, they agreed to build the railroad, and that's what they did. The Zinzendorf Hotel is where everybody did all their business, where they stayed, and this, this was the major spot in town. And that's where they agreed uh, to build the railroad, and it's where they signed the paperwork in 1909 to build the railroad from Winston Salem all the way to Waitsboro. And contracts were let, and NNW did most of the work. It was kind of a division of labor between the NNW and the Atlantic Coastline. The Coastline became the paperwork partner that kept track of everything and kind of ran uh, the billing and everything for the railroad, and NNW did the actual online work. And here we see an inspection train that they took out, and we see Pleasant, who was the chief engineer, uh, Churchill, uh, and of course, Freeze was president of Southbound. And there may be some other names on there. Here's Cornell. And these people were famous people of the time who went out here and inspected the railroad. You understand? This flat car was kind of seating on it, an engine, they just kind of pushed them down the track to see what we built. Well, the first train ran from Winston Salem to Waynesburg, November 24, 1910. Couple, two weeks off, week off. And that's when they ran the very first train all the way through. And this was the daughter up here, they talk about her, she was the daughter of the engineers, and they ran the train down. Notice it was, it was all Norfolk and Washington equipment, they did not have any Wisconsin southbound stuff yet. And it was a big thing for I me. Mean, we talked about, I started at the beginning saying, you know, what effect did the railroads have on the community? Well, this was a major event in town. Kids got out of school, they marched up and down the street, uh, they had a lot of stuff going on in town. They had banquets, they had a little bit of everything to make people realize the importance of this. So the railroad affected the community in many ways, and that was one of the things they did. Uh, they had games, they had parties, I mean this was a big deal, this was, this was a really big deal. And here was the announcement of the first freight, the first train service was in 1911. The southbound building was built in 1910, and this is what it looked like later years, but still, that was their office building, the freight headquarters. And later, with the coming of the Salem bypass, the building got shortened a little bit, and that's how it looked in the later years. Uh, they also built a station at South Winston. So there was a passenger station, freight station in South Winston, and they used to charge to drive from South Winston. Where was South Winston? It was down about where the Lex Road plant is for Western Electric. And they would charge a nickel to go from down there up into town on one of their trains, and a nickel to go back. And people did that. It was either that or, or you'd take a horse. You still didn't have a way from the horse. So they did that, and it was also a junction point or what we call the tar branch. That's the branch that came up along the tar creek. Now, here we see a passenger train. This is the only picture that I have found anybody else ever seen of a Winston Salem passenger train. We are still looking. We'll be looking forever, probably. But that is a key picture. If you've got it, call me. I got car <laughs> too. If you call, call Chris, call for, get hold of some. But that was a Winston-Salem passenger train. And that's, like as I said, that is the only known photograph of one. And this one actually came out of a, a, a screen print, not a document of that. But that's it, that was the South Winston Station. Uh, the tar branch came up from there, came across Sunnyside Avenue, uh, through Old Salem, and kind of came up uh, along uh, Main Street out here and along the Salem Bypass. It was well known for its famous wigwag <coughs> so 
And these things went back and forth when a train came, the bell rang, the light went, and the red light flashed and said, there's a train, they're gone. Hmm. It came into a place downtown, and right down here, right down the street, mm -hmm. and this was the power building for the streetcar system and everything else. There was track right out here, right up here on the, about three blocks up. There's track down the middle of the street. And this is here on Marshall Street, this little triangular shaped building is where they distributed all the electricity for once and site that came out of there. Uh, they served a foundry up in here, and the track went all the way uh, up there by the restaurant, the Winston <coughs> restaurant that's up there, uh, and went underneath Second Street here. So they could service Brian and Williams and Tobacco Company. The fact that was available made Tobacco Company, gave a job to Tobacco Companies. Uh, here we see a train in Old Salem, shot in the 70s, uh -huh. and by this time, uh, we don't want to get into too much about the southbound, but anyway, but they were using some NW, and this was right across the street, right out here. And uh, the train ran there, it crossed over Main Street. And you can see the old bus, but uh, they crossed over Main Street. And here is an aerial picture kind of showing the depot, this large bridge down here. This is the bridge you see driving south on uh, 52, the Violet Bridge here. This bridge is 960 feet long and 72 feet high. And the theater was here. There's a theater down until we built 52. So all of that was along the southbound. And here we see a train down there at the Midway Drive-In. The Midway Drive-In is not Midway, it's here. And uh, there's a freight train under steam, 1957. Here's the bridge, an aerial shot of the bridge. Uh, and uh, you can see here it was originally double track, single track now. Uh, and that, like I said, that bridge is 72 feet tall. Uh, a more modern shot, kind of showing the girders and how it was built. Uh, and this shows you the relationship of the NOW yard and the southern that we did. But if you want to know where this was, this is I 40. It crossed right over the top of it, and 52 would be right down here. And I just want to show you that. So, somebody, where was all these places? When you look at your car with it, it used to see nothing but trains. It used to be trains on both sides, all along. There's one track through there now. This is the other side of the southbound building, kind of a back view. Notice the ventilated watermelon car. <laughs> used to call watermelons in here. And they did that, or bananas. Uh, and they did that, and the reason they said the ventilator was the air to go through there and keep it cool. Remember, these were not mechanically refrigerated yet. Man, got that far. Uh, they didn't need to be iced because you don't ice watermelon when you do heat. But you don't necessarily ice watermelon and freeze it, so you don't want to do that. And this is a, a real classic picture. We had a thing around town called Team Tracks. And Team Tracks, I never really knew what the name was for a while. It meant that you brought up a team of horses and you could unload stuff into your wagon. This guy was unloading coal out of this Winston Town Southbound Hopper uh, gondola into his wagon. And then he would haul it somewhere. Team Tracks were all over because that's how you got stuff off the train, was you had a Team Track. And they were everywhere. Uh, here is another picture downtown. Here's the office building. And these were team tracks here and here. Here they had another team track and they had an overhead crane so if it was too heavy to pick up, you could actually pick it up and put it in your wagon. And you can see, these are wagons here. There, there. So this was a southbound building. This was a cold storage building. I don't remember this at all. Even though I grew up here, I don't remember that building. But that was a cold storage building. And that was the southbound yard uh, downtown, Old Salem down here, Main Street. Now, and here is another view of the same area. Here's out the supply, obviously, uh, which is now, I guess, the downtown school, something like that over there. These buildings are gone. But what do we see here? We see concrete. Uh, this is I 40 being built. And it also means there's a steam engine. I 40 is probably the only U.S. interstate, the only interstate highway built using steam locomotives. <laughs> and so that is really kind of a historic shot to say, hey, we use steam engineers to build I 40. Nobody ever believes you talk. There's a picture proof. 
So more track in the downtown, well, well, this is all on the tar branch, more track that was down there. Here is a southbound engine, just to give you an idea of what some things look like on the southbound. Another southbound engine, the 200 number, Class M series. And <coughs> we talked about the interchange with the southbound and the streetcar system. Here's the streetcar system, and here is the southbound. And they did cross each other and interchange there. They wanted to interchange freight, be able to, run, be able to run freight up and down the streetcar system to deliver to merchants. And here's a letter from the Norfolk and Western to the southbound saying, hey, no, we serious steam railroads do not plan to ever pass freight off to these electric operations. <laughs> And it had a big effect here. It had an even bigger effect in High Point, where they really had a lot of stuff downtown. But it said, we're not going to do business with it. Here is the uh, railroad building down there now, the old freight, the uh, South Bend offices uh, and freight station. It was there. It's now a restaurant. I forgot what it's called. It's been through two or three iterations. So, anyway, it's there. It's still there. Uh, all of the records to the railroad, and I think this is really key, were stored up here. They had every single piece of paper they had ever written on from 1905 till I cleaned it out with a friend of mine, Jim Vaughn, in 1980. But there was every single single piece of paper was in there. The dirt in there had not been disturbed in about 100 years. <laughs> and it was all up there, and we were able to acquire it. We also had downtown, we had the uh, Norfolk and Western, and uh, the southbound had a freight office. This building was a great building inside. The freight building was not so good. Uh, but this was downtown, uh, right there. We went underneath that 1916 bridge. It was right there. And here's a side view of it as it became more decrepit. And an end view from this end, from the other end of the building, to show that's where you had freight. What came in there? If you had something coming in that you ordered, say, let's say you ordered, a, well, you didn't order a TV, but, but you could have ordered a, a, a piece of equipment for your industry. It came here, it was taken off the car, offloaded here, and you picked it up on this side, originally with a horse and wagon, and then later with, with a truck. And this is where they transferred from rail cars to a truck. Also, if you wanted to ship something, you're a furniture maker, you'd be a company down here, and you wanted to send furniture out. Well, if you didn't have a way to put it on a track, you could offload it here, and take it here, and it'll be shipped. Another view of some freight stuff. Uh, this was the Southern Freight Station, and notice all the people working down here. That's because they had to move stuff from one place to another. Uh, and take stuff off of Say this car came from North Wilkesboro, but we needed this, this stuff on here to be separated out, to go maybe to Baltimore, or maybe to New York, or to down south. New Orleans, they took it off here to Maine. These guys took this stuff off, looked at where it was going, and put it in the right car to go where it had to go. This is all that's left down there. There's this one tower, and it's in some of the other shots I showed you. That's all that's down there. Anyway, NMW had North Yard, which they opened in 1926, and they moved out of once downtown. All the downtown smoke and everything left, and we see a few shots of what steam power looked like in North Yard. It was a big yard right across from the airport here. And the most important thing, we don't have a good shot, is there was a loop track. Went out here to Akron Drive, which is this, and came out here, around here. And that allowed them to turn locomotives and complete trains around. Could be done there. There was no turntable downtown. There was nothing that allowed them to had to turn a whole train. That's how they did it. They came in here, and they could back around here, and you could turn a train around. So, I've been given the high sign. Anyway, there's NW Yard. And an innovative thing here is the locomotive shop that was built here was very innovative. And uh, that is what they call a lumatorium. It was written up in the NW as the most modern and advanced locomotive servicing center. The coal tower, uh, here's an engine being watered there. Uh, some more shots of North Yard. And a little more North Yard. I hate to go so fast, but Chris gave me the high sign. Uh, and another yard. Now, let's talk about the station. It opened in 1926 and was jointly used by the Winston Salem Southern, Winston Salem, Southbound, and the NW. This gives you an idea how busy they were. These are all separate passenger trains that came through our station. 
And that's hard to believe, isn't it? But that's when they opened up. Uh, that was in May 1st, 1926, and that said these are the first trains we'll be using it. Uh, there was a tower built down there to help control the tracks, and this is the tracks of the southbound. And here's a nice aerial shot of our beautiful station that's down there. This is still there. And uh, this was designed originally for the trolleys to turn around, they didn't come. Anyway, so this is the depot. This building is still there. All the railroad stuff is gone. Another picture from the front of the depot. And this is the inside. And this great inside shot is being recreated. Everything you see here will be done by the wonderful Michelle Halter back there. Raise your hand, Michelle. She is the preservation architect for the depot, and I have seen her drawing. Let me tell you, she is terrific when it comes to being able to duplicate what you see in this picture. It will be duplicated down there. And she assures me that it will be perfect, right, Michelle? <laughs> Uh, when you see the drawing and the work she does, it's great. Anyway, here's a train coming in from Roanoke under Liberty Street Bridge. This is from Roanoke, the Class K locomotive. They came around this curve downtown. This is the Blue Street, and you went underneath there to get over to the depot over there. But there is the K Class locomotive coming from Roanoke. Here's a, a steam engine in the depot. K Class, headed to Roanoke. They had to turn us around on the loop track. I do not know when they did that, but they did. And we see the train leaving. Notice the semaphores down there, uh, the towers down there. Uh, here is a great picture, I think, of K-Class locomotive. Uh, with some boys out here looking at the train in the depot. I don't know what this occasion was, but this is the number of people that got on a train to leave. <coughs> this is not a sponsored excursion or anything similar. It's just people waiting to get on the train. Uh, a private business car was down at the station. Here's two Southern Railway engines sitting down there getting ready to go to either Asheville or back to Greensboro, probably to Asheville. This is an early diesel picture uh, of which we have an FT set, and this was down here in the depot again, another train. Here's another train, that years later. Once again, this is the Carolinian going to Asheville. What's the year on that early diesel? Uh, I'm going to say that this is probably in the late 50s. Yeah. I'm going to guess late 50s. Uh, and freight engines started coming through. <coughs> Oops, let me back up. You can see part of this is being torn down. Part of the deep, the, the, the overhead, part of the uh, shelter is torn. This is when they started 52. They knew this a lot of the stuff is going to go away because they're going to use less track. So they know that's when 52 got started. Uh, this is another train, and notice the number of mail cars. That's mostly what you had being carried on the trains. When the railroads lost the mail contract, that brought an end to, to a lot of passenger service. But like I say, our station going to, uh, going to Asheville. This picture, just as my most recent shot, this passenger car sits down here. We were very fortunate. We had our own private, I don't say private, we had our own passenger car that went to New York. And you could get on that car in the afternoon, the sleeper, go to New York, and get off the train there. They'd also come back in the afternoon, and you could get off the car. You could stay on the car, they bring back in the morning. You could, you could get on the car from 5 until about 9, and then they would haul that car over to Greensboro and catch the train going there. Uh, and then you could also come from New York back. I remember this many times, that's why I bring that up. Notice 52, uh, I-40 is being built over here. A great, great picture of what was happening. Very unusual. It was not common. When I tell people in the rail fan community, we had our own car in New York, they look at you like you're nuts because nobody had that. So we were that important a community. And let me skip through some of these. This is, once again, a later picture of the Carolinian going. Uh, some freight traffic coming through past the depot. And a Winston-Salem southbound train up on the bridge. This right here is a classic picture. This is the last steam locomotive to operate on the Winston-Salem side and in the Winston-Salem. Passing the tower, this and my dad took this picture. And so it was kind of neat to have that with the 
stationed in the backdrop. He just took it. He said, oh, this is neat. Oh, he was a somewhat a photographer. And he went out and took it. Don't have any of it. But that's what the took. year. Huh? Oh, this was April the 22nd, 1957. So that's when that was. The southbound got rid of all of its steam engines and replaced it with diesels that look like this. And this beautiful paint scheme. And without, we have to, don't have enough time to go into all their details on the diesels, but they had four of them. Here is an engine, that engine that you just saw, or certainly one like it, uh, being scrapped out at Brenner Scrapyard on, uh, on uh, excuse me, up on Liberty, up on, oops, up in town, uh, can't think of the street. But anyway, but they're up there, and they were cut these engines up here. They were all scrapped. All the southbound engines were cut up for scrap. And there you see the workers doing it. And so all of those were scrapped here. This is in 1957. This is really the end of steam railroading for the country. I mean, it was coming to an end. It was coming to a close. Uh, this station, once again, is uh, South Winston. And we wanted to show you what's there now. Nothing. <laughs> Everything's gone. 52 got built. It went right over the top of the station. It went away. Uh, N and W switched from steam to diesel. As we can see on this train, headed up Liberty Street. Uh, this is a classic. This is what my dad would take me to do. We would go out. This is on Stratford Road, <coughs> directly across from Thruway, and you would see the passenger train, the Carolina, the Asheville Special, that was headed to Asheville. One diesel, uh, a couple cars, and. They would stop at Staley's restaurant there at the corner of Nowood and Stratford Road, and they would get breakfast for everybody. You would order breakfast at the station, they would call them up and say, hey, we need so many of these and so many of those, and that's what they put on the train. And this, like I said, this was, we would stop there, we would eat ice cream at No More Dairy there, and then we would be able to, then we would watch the train. This is my dad and I did almost every Sunday. Now, interesting, past that, at Haynes, there was a depot. I have never told anybody that knows anything about this. I don't know what was happening here. We know the train was stopped. We know it's probably a fire hose. Nobody knows where, exactly where that was. But we assume it was across from the Haynes plant where we don't know. Uh, the train went out to Clemens, and all of that's gone. What you see sitting here is one of our favorite locomotives. That's the 542 before it was moved to Clemens, uh, moved out to Tanglewood. Another train picture through the station in the latter years. This is the last passenger train to come through Winston-Salem. This is July 1970, and it is the last, very last train to ever use the depot. And uh, you got that picture. There's the rear of the train. You can see the foliage you've grown up. That was the last passenger train to use our depot. Came from Asheville. And in later in years, you can see we kind of took a snowy picture, say, hey, thing cold set in on it. Uh, another picture coming down. And you see the depot going down, and you can see the freight train was using it. They often parked some freight cars there. And this was the back of the station, so we still see what was there. Uh, and now, this is what's there. All the track is gone, and this part was torn down. And we were very fortunate. The railroad tore down. The railroad property line is about two feet out here. Uh, and the rest is done by an S. Over here, this is all an S. This is the depot project. Uh, and here's the front of the depot, 03, when Davis Garage had it. So it's no longer Davis Garage sign to say Davis Garage. Here is a picture I took a week ago, two weeks. And we see the signs down, the building is in this condition. And this was goes into the what was the white grading room, and this went into the color room. The biggest change is the door here. The original door, Michelle has assured me, will be replaced and put in place. And so that's what it looks like uh, today. It's what you see on Martin Luther King Drive. Uh, here is one of the famous trains that came out of Winston, in addition to the just the depot. This was the Winston Salem southbound steam trip. It ran the most number of passengers of any steam excursion run on Norfolk Southern. It went to Waynesburg and back, and we ran the Canadian Pacific engine because the 4501 at the time had been in a, in a collision and slightly damaged during the Loretta Lynn movie, so we ended up with this instead. Uh, coal miner's daughter. 
So we ran that train. Here is the 2716 steam engine being run to, uh, I think this would end up going to uh, Salisbury and Asheville, several places. And here is the biggest engine to ever operate in Winston-Salem, and that is the 1218. No engine before or after ever was here. And this is a night shot before we did an excursion to Roanoke. Uh, one of the other famous trains, the railroad brings us a lot of stuff. We're talking about what the railroad brings. They bring us a fair train. If it wasn't for the railroad, you wouldn't have the Dixie Classic Fair because you couldn't bring the stuff here. And it comes every year, and they run about a 70 car train uh, that comes in and brings all the rides and everything, and they've been coming here like forever. Salem Yard was the uh, southern yard, and we can see what's here. Uh, it had a, had a state, had a coaling tower and some other things. There was a turntable and there was a roundhouse. I do not have a picture of the roundhouse. And the interstate locomotives used to run out of there. It is now a bulk transfer facility. North Winston Yard uh, was operated by the NW prior to the merger of NW and Southern in 1982. And those two items became the Norfolk Southern. And here is an early picture taken in the 70s of Northwestern Yard. You'll notice the NW engines, cabooses, which are now also gone. The yard is unchanged. You know, if you look at the picture, it's still the same. And it has become this. It is the Norfolk Southern Yard. And uh, we see NS engines there. You can see UP there. You can see uh, a lot of different railroads will, uh, because of leasing and loans will come in there. But that's what's there now. Gone are the days of the NW caboose and all other cabooses. Uh, and north of here is one of the most important things we have in the area that the railroad brings us our automobiles. At Walkertown, which is along US 311, is the car lot. This is where your automobiles come from, the west coast, all the way across the country in the auto carriers. They're unloaded here, and it's one of the largest auto unloaders, unloading places in the whole country. And I don't know exactly what brands come in and that sort of thing, but they're in there. They're there every day unloading cars. And so you'll see trains, cars come in. They don't come to Winston, but it's close enough that I throw it in the Winston Salem jobs, influence. And you get a really fresh car off of these. I mean, they haven't been anywhere. Uh, if we look up off up toward uh, North State, we can start up toward North Yard. Road. We start seeing what's changed. The scale tracks are out. Uh, with the merger, a lot of things started going away. And here we see this is the NW. Uh, and this is the ex southern track uh, that goes up toward Wuhan. Well, the connection track sits here. Originally, the NW and Southern only interchanged in downtown Winston, even though they were more than a couple hundred feet apart. Until they built the connection track between the two, they did not interchange. Now, and here we see a train kind of coming up that way, and we're down toward North Winston. Uh, Junction downtown is what they call this. This is right along 27th Street. Uh, just to give you some idea of what's going on there now, this track goes out toward the mall. To, uh, toward the mall in Charlotte, this track uh, goes back there. This is out of service. Get to that. We have a wide built downtown to turn stuff on better than the turning loop. We still see a sign that the NW was here. This is down on Northwest Boulevard. This track is a mystery. It was a narrow gauge track in the street downtown. I don't know what it was for or why it was there, but it is there. This is the Bailey Coal Plant. And this is where they dropped off coal cars and did that sort of thing. It's all gone. This is where the, the uh, depot was, 3rd Patterson. This is what's down there now. Most of all the downtown track is gone. This track is gone. This was a coal truck coal trestle, but they used to unload the coal cars. I think this was Thomas Coal Company. Downtown, they dropped coal out of here into the cars. And there you see the end of one. Give you some idea what the coal tipples looked like. No, the tip, coal trestle. Coal dock, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. the wrong <coughs> Downtown Wisdom was an interesting place. We had the NNW coming this way. The southbound was here. And here's the southern. All this is now gone. Came down here, uh, and this was called Winston Salem Southbound Crossing it was kind of a neat place because there was a lot of activity there. Uh, and you can see where the tracks went. And all of that is now gone. Uh, as you can see here, they're taking it up. 
and they rebuilt this crossing totally. They took the crossing out. They, uh, it's gone. And this is what's down there now. There's the Bailey plant. This is the new bridge that they put in over uh, the uh, Innovation Parkway. It's going to be right down here. It is now. This track right here is gone. Uh, this is the switch. That also, on the left of the side, that it begins right here, and it goes from there south. Everything else they had to interchange. All the other towers, and lights, and signals were gone. And here's an aerial shot. This goes out to the to the in, to the depot. This is the south end going going south. And they did put a pass track down there for some reason, but we don't know why. And here is the parkway being put in. And we still have a sign reminding us of the southbound down on Dean Street. This is a Royal Cake Company that was down there. They used to have stuff come in to make a lot of stuff. had Royal Cake, eight years, it's kind of like a small Shirley Bakery goods. And they used to get trains in there, bring in the, the various stuff for making, uh, for making their treats. And they used to store it there. This is downtown, right up here on Main Street. Only this little piece of track is left in the tar room. That's the only piece that's left. Up wide there, don't know. Here is the bridge over 52 that they're busy working on. And we can see a new bridge is being built over 52. Many of you have driven this every day. Uh, and this is the new bridges going in. And we can kind of see what they're building. They are putting in a double track bridge, a single track, double track. Theory behind that is they're making a way for Amtrak. Don't know. And here is the old track. This is where the new track is going. You can see how much wider that is. Mm -hmm. And if you look very carefully and see it, I don't know if it shows it. You see the red dots, the little red flags. That's where the track's going to go. Mm -hmm. So this, they are going to put in one track and leave room for a second. And this is interesting too, because this section is being built because they're going to build a bridge in here and not sure how there's a pier for it. Uh, and there's the other ones here because that's where the new south it's not Innovation Park or the name change, but it's going right there. And it's going to connect. I think it's called the Salem Bypass or the Salem Creek Parkway or something like that. Somebody might know. But anyway, they're going to have to put a bridge for the railroad right there, so we're going to build those in there. This is going south. This is the new, this is the Winston Town Southbound offices ever since they left. This is down by Corn Products. And we can see this was Corn Products when they opened up. And uh, they have their own switcher down there. They're the only place in town that operates their own switch engine. And it got painted in later years. They get about 100 cars of, co of co corn in there every day. And they convert that into corn syrup. The syrup is what they put in coke or whatever else you need. So that's what they make there. This is Bill Yard that was built exclusively to serve Schlitz. Schlitz is gone. It's mostly used for storage. These are corn cars that will go up to corn products. And this is a product coming out of corn products in tank cars. Uh, a little bit up toward town, this is off Thane Station Road. Uh, the south, the southern used to run up there. That track is now leased out and is not uh, is now leased to the Yankton Valley Railroad. So we, we need to say that. I got a few out of order here. I'm sorry. This is mile post one on the southbound. Uh, also down on the southbound across from the Royal Cake Company down there is a concrete plant. It used to be Santee Cooper Cement. Santee Cement. And it now has a new name, I think Holcrest or something. Oh, here's the Yadkin Valley engine. These used to run around town some. Uh, they have now been painted black, but they came down across the Thanya Station Road. They actually operate from uh, North Yard all the way out to Rural Hall and to King and up toward Mount Airy. And they call uh, carloads of corn for the chickens. Anyway, another picture of train going across down there. Thatcher Station Roads, kind of how it is today. Here's an engine where most of us recognize. We'll get into some more personalized stuff. This is the 542. Many of us saw this and played on it as kids out of Tanglewood Park. And this is the engine at Tanglewood when it was first put out there. And another shot. It has now been moved down to the uh, Transportation Museum thanks to a very large amount of money given by the Winston Salem chapter, National Railway Historical Society, helped finance this move down there so that it can be restored and will eventually, we hope, see it run. But it came out of Tanglewood Park. Uh, a southbound caboose, some of you have ever seen that. 
And this will take too long to go over, but quickly, this was the NMW coming down here, downtown Winston, and this was the Southern Railway until the merger in, 19, this was in 1981, they merged in 82. After the merger, and, and by 1982, after the merger, we had this, we had the Y put in, and we had traffic still coming down here. Today, this is what we have left. The NS is in the purple, okay? The track out Stratford Road and it has been deemed out of service. It's still there, but it's out of service. They can't use it because it's in too poor condition. The last train to go out here was run by the South Valley Model Railroaders, was the 611 out there on a train trip. After that, they decided it was in too poor condition, whether it's from the locomotive or what. I don't know, but there's a bridge here, and they can't run over that bridge. Um, this track right here has been rail banked, is now owned by the state of North Carolina. It is being saved for future passenger service or something. They won't say what, but, they, but that's owned by the state now. And here is the walk terminal, walk yard, and up here is the only other yard in town. Nothing downtown. Nothing. And is there anything that goes to the airport? To the, the to airport, the, not, not, not Smith, but the, uh, the, the main airport. Uh, yes, the track goes right past there at Friendship. And that gives us a possibility for a commuter train. Anyway, here's the southbound coming down to the uh, main offices that we showed you. And here, and Corner Products is there. Schlitz was here until they went away. So we lost Schlitz down there. But they were down there as a major spot, and they're gone. Here's where the tar branch ran. Of course, it's all gone. It's, it's totally gone. I mean, there's no hope it come out. Bill has been built on that. Uh, and so it's it's not even a possibility. And let's see here. Come on. So I made a little trip out, show us what was here. Here is the bridge over Northwest Boulevard. Now, uh, back up here. This is condemned. It's a wooden bridge over here and it looks like it's not ordered. And that's why they don't go out Stratford Road. They this 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 track in here, there is a wooden truss up here and it may have it, it should have it. Uh, has been condemned, and as a result, no traffic on Stratford Road. That's what keeps it off Stratford Road. Here we see a bridge that's over across on the road on the same piece of track. Trolley cars used to go over here. Notice the Art Deco style here. You know, we talk about a little bit about style and things in Winston. There it is. That's right there at Northwest Boulevard and uh, Renault, and, uh, Renault Road. Uh, Reynolds High School used to get stuff by coal. This was the power plant for Reynolds High School. Here is the famous tunnel, those of us who know about that. You know, the tunnel that went underneath here, went all underneath two tracks, and it came out on the other side. And this power plant was built. Remember, the railroad was built here first. And I knew somebody who said, yes, they used to help build it, help take the coal out of coal cars. They fired their own power plant there. Uh, this is the bridge over Hawthorne Road. Reynolds High School would be up here. Wiley is over here. And streetcars went under here too. And this bridge is out of service. Uh, this is Freeway Shopping Center area. Right across from I showed you a picture of the passenger train that my dad took. Well, this is right across the street from Freeway. This was a team <coughs> truck, and a lot of stuff got unloaded there. I remember as kids seeing tractors unloaded there. Uh, all kinds of stuff was unloaded right there at that spot. Uh, machinery, you name it. But this is crossing, this is Oakwood, okay? And now, we look at this piece of track here and we wonder, why is he showing us this? What's in this picture? Picture this. First, they're talking about making this three tracks wide, maybe four. The railroad actually owns out to right about there. <laughs> What's going to happen on Stratford Road when we get past your service? <laughs> And they, they said they will have to run that on a separate piece of track. You know, obviously, the pass train will not be share track with the freight train. Well, there's a little bit more than that to the story. What else? <coughs> this is probably one of the most famous, unrecognized places in Winston Sussex. President Eisenhower was running for election in 1956. The train stopped here. All the kids from Moore School came out to see the president, and he sat there. I was in the crowd, he did not reach down and touch me, but I remember seeing him here. They stopped here, he was there, Manny was on the back, 
man was on the back of, of the observation car with him, and they were waiting, and they stopped the train here. In Winston Salem, September 26, 1956. And we were on more school, so we just walked there to see. Uh, so a very famous piece of track, once again, out of service. Uh, also out that way, we have several things here that's important. This marked the end of Winston Salem yard limits, and the trains could come out there, and they weren't considered out on the road, they weren't on the main line. And they would come out, and they could stop here. Uh, and uh, that's what the yard limits I said, not here. More important to most of the club members, this is where we eat on Tuesday night. It's in Stratford Station. So I wonder how we're going to fact. Well, we have a restaurant that has a train motif. We for trains, we wouldn't have the restaurant. And we might not be eating there. So, but anyway, that's what we do. Our chief uh, picker back there, Mike, who picks out our, who is our dinner connoisseur back there, uh, besides where we're eating every day. But we eat there about every Tuesday night. Uh, good food. Anyway, uh, out on Stratford Road, there's only one industry left that might be used. There's a concrete operation just slightly on, heading out a little bit further. Uh, not in use now, like I said, it tracks out of service. Uh, this is a picture of the rail bank track that's up there at the north end of town. Uh, Winston is officially at this point on the railroad, which is right off 27th Street. And this is 28th Street here, and the line splits right here to go to Rural Hall and to go up to North Yard of Roanoke. Uh, the switch is right here, and uh, this is along Liberty Street right here, and that's 28th Street. And it is privately owned by the state to someday have pasture trains. Anyway, so we talk about arts and innovation here in the town. The innovative things, the trolley car system. The fact that Frank Sprague was here. What did Sprague do? Sprague figured out in Winston Salem how to make cars work together, what we call MU, multiple unit control. So that if you had one electric car and you needed to run it, you could have another car behind it being pulled, subways, every place you can think of that has that, was figured out right here in Winston and was developed here. So that modern technology of multiple unit trains, and those of you who know what I'm talking about, uh, can operate that way with one motor, and that's what you had to have. You didn't have separate engineers, you didn't have separate crews, you had one guy who could run several cars. And all of that was figured out by Frank Sprague here in Winston. That's why we got Sprague Street. Okay. Artists. Here we see an artist from Atlanta who painted the picture we saw on the Winston Salem Southbound train. Famous artist Robert West from Atlanta uh, did an oil painting of that, uh, a watercolor. Anyway, he did a painting and of the picture from the picture you saw. So there's an artsy thing that affected that our community was affected. Here is another art picture. I don't know if you can tell it, but that's kind of an arty looking shot. Look at it close to your eyes. That was shot by, that was painted by a fellow here in town, William Lawson, and he did this picture. Uh, he took the picture and he kind of worked it out, did that. And there's another artsy place that figures. Music figured in town, big time. One of the places it figured was in the music world was from uh, a fellow named David Nimlock. Steve Hutchinson was in the band, he's around here. And Steve also participated in doing it. This is the record that is used with the NNW to tell the story. All of that was done here in Winston-Salem. Kind of amazing. You think, they've got a whole system all over the country. The music came from Winston-Salem. Uh, and David's a, as an attorney here in town, so, you know, and so it's really great that that was done here, the story of the Sixth Eleven. Uh, art is anything you want it to call. And it's hard to say what is art and what isn't. This is on the southbound model, where his layout was. It's not now, but that's another story. But anyway, but that's art. <laughs> and that is an art scene right there. If, you know, creating something art-wise for a model railroad, it's kind of artsy. So we have that. And this is the model railroad club, and we're there every Tuesday night. And the layout is in the process of being totally rebuilt. That scene is gone, but it will be replaced by others. But we are rebuilding about a third of a half of it. Where are we going? All right, we're going to this point. This is the inside of the depot as it now stands. And this is what it's going to look like. Beautiful place with the chandeliers are all original, with the original benches. Uh, and 
everything. We can thank Michelle for coming up with this. When our community has somebody to thank in the future, it will be this lady. She designed all this and figured out what we had to do, how to get these chandeliers, how to get everything exactly like it was in 1926. This is another side of it. Great shape. And like I said, this is the inside of the garage. And this is how it's going to look, look before long. Design the benches. She's done it. She's done everything. I just can't say enough about. It. She sprayed the paint off the walls to get the color just right to match. Uh, there's just not enough you can say about somebody doing a job 100 <coughs> percent. She's so particular. She said to me the other day. She said, "Well, we can't use bolt head screws and everything. They didn't have them." <laughs> <laughs> so she keeps up with everything. Uh, anyway, uh, this is an exterior drawing track side. Okay, and we hope to make this a space for rail fans. We have we've discussed that. This will be a large plate glass window here, uh, and I convinced her this needs to be a rail fan spot. So she's kind of in the process of that. But this is the back side of the depot. Trains will eventually be down here. Okay, now we're at this car, and this is what was here. Okay, this is what came here. This is what got us started. The old remember this is all wood. As you can't tell, it's all wood. And this is what we did. And we hope to be heading to this here in town. I have spoken with people, and the decision is that, and I'll give you an update kind of where we are train wise and getting to we were in this terrible hole for a while. We're not going to send you a train, you don't have a depot. And then we said, well, and then other people in town said, well, why have a train depot if we don't have a train? So we're kind of locked in that loop. That loop, thanks to Michelle, the city, and a lot of other people, and her company, uh, Walter Robbs, Associates, and just a lot of people, we have now broke the loop and say, hey, we're going to have a beautiful depot here, a beautiful restored depot. It's happening. Now we need a track. So in talking to the state, here's where we stand. We are approved on what they call the Tier 1 plan. And that says, here's the basic idea of what we want to build. In the South, Southeastern High Speed Rail Service. And that's coming. And we are included in that particular plan that there will be high speed rail service here. And all of the comments on that on the route, the actual route of the train, has been completed, the survey's done, all that stuff. Right now we've moved into tier two and that will take a while. Tier two says exactly what are we going to build, exactly where are the tracks going, exactly what are the EPA requirements. And we are in that stage. That stage is currently being finished between Raleigh, between, excuse me, between Richmond and Raleigh, and then they will begin Raleigh to Charlotte, and we will be in that phase. No time to. But we're looking at having something done before too terribly long. Michelle said that they hope to have the depot mm -hmm. complete in about 18 months. They hope to start from the time they start. And we should start seeing some progress down there starting in March. And that's what we're looking at is this fact that in March, this thing will get started and we'll start seeing the trash come out of there and we'll start seeing changes and, and things will happen. It's a very complex project, more so than what I ever thought it would be until I looked at the drawings for Michelle. She spent some time with me going over all the research. How did they get the color? How did they do the bench? What's the word you use for the benches? I couldn't remember. Oh, the fuming? Fuming. Okay, I couldn't remember. I tried to tell the guy what they do call fuming the benches in order to get them the right color. So she's a real expert on this. The thing will be done right. And you got to realize your mechanicals. What else is going in the depot? Besides trains up the side of the ticket booths and everything on the first level, the bottom level will be where you get on the train. And in between, there'll be rented space. The city will be using a lot of that space. There will be space in there to rent. We don't know what's going in there yet. And I have, you know, it's still up for discussion. It's a way off. Yes, sir. Multimodal to other local transportation? Uh, I don't really know. What we're hoping to have happen, and, and we've talked about it a little bit, is you all know we're planning on a streetcar system. Well, the streetcar system needs to come down there, and at first it wasn't, and now it looks like they will, as part of the phase, is to be able to get off the streetcar, get into the train station. Take a train from there to go to the Greensboro Airport, mm -hmm. get off at the airport, and go. Get on the plane. That's the long-term goal. 
where the where things are going to happen, we have two things to consider. One, we have the high speed line, which would be coming from Richmond down through Raleigh, across Greensboro, Winston Salem, and then it's got to turn south and go down and catch the main line back somewhere around Salisbury. That's maybe one of the reasons they're double tracking that southbound bridge. Don't know, but that's one of the thoughts. That's why that's happening, as opposed to a single track bridge. So that's a possibility. So then you'll be able to go take the train. The other train that we're looking at is a commuter line that would run from Knoxville to Greensboro and Burlington. And so that's the second thing that might happen. So that's kind of kind of where we're at on what we're at and what's happening. I would say that the earliest we expect to really see anything is 2020. I don't think we'll see it talking to state people. And that's not that far off. But by then we ought to know what's going on. Our depot will be finished, it'll be ready for trains. And that's what's going to happen. And various city offices are going to be moving into parts of the depot that we don't see as for pastoral service. Okay? And I want to credit a lot of people for helping me. I could not do this without some great folks. Uh, Molly Rouse, who you don't know, is a wonderful asset for the <coughs> community and keeps up with everything. The Winston Salem Time Traveler, everything. The journal, the Department of Archives has provided materials, some stuff from Junior Tech, and of course, Michelle for all her great stuff lately, and a bunch of other folks and photographers and people. And I would say one thing, we need something to put in the depot. If you've got anything that you think of a historic railroad nature, you contact me, my cards are out, Michelle, or just, there's several people you can contact me, my cards are out. We are especially in need of a color photograph of, of a Winston 7 trolley car, just to see it and say, okay, these are the colors. Uh, we also need a picture of a Winston Salem southbound passenger train so we can do some stuff with that for the model club. And if you find any, don't have any, I don't care if it's a year from now, a few years from now, contact with us and say there it is. Any questions that you all have? Yes, sir. There's uh, the track that runs by Idles Road behind Tanglewood. Yes. Comes up, and I'm assuming it eventually uh, becomes the Stratford Road. Yes, sir. Where does that go? There's trains come up there with two cars to there the other are, cars. There are, yes. And there's a, still a siding there where Clemens Station used to be. There are some places along there. I think there's an industrial center out there now. Out towards there's Clemens. a farm. Huh? They're serve, they come in and serve as a farm between uh, Hampton Road and Stratford, where they come out on Stratford Road. There's yep. a farm back in there, and that's what they bring covered hoppers up for work. So yeah, there are some places up there that uh, it's an industrial area in there. Yes, mm -hmm. that's still, that track is not out of service right up to there. Yeah. And right. they do use that siding apparently to pull the car on to so they can get the engine mm -hmm. to they the run around the track. So they can pull it instead of pushing it right. all the way back. They work out, they come from Moxford. That's where the stuff comes from, is out there. Any other questions? <laughs> not a question, just Credit ought to be given to Mr. Davis for operating his business in the depot for so many years and preserving as much of it as he could. Yes, he did. He did. He did not. He could have done a lot of obstruction in there, and that was not done. So he, he did a great job for the community in saving it, regardless of what anybody thought. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a quick side, they offered me that depot for a dollar, and I just couldn't see it at the time. My wife had killed me. So anyway, anyway, no, but I got offered a, a dollar for the depot, so. But that was back in 1973 when we had all that, so uh, I was offered that. And, yes? 19, uh, when I-40 was built, yes. the steam engine, when was that? When I-40, I was 19, it had to be probably 56. I think that's when we were building I-40, it was 56. Somewhere between 44 and 56. Uh, we lived right there on Clover Drive, we were building on Clover Day, <coughs> somewhere right in that time frame. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. I urge you to support your meeting here. And I urge you to, if you want to come out to our Rowing Club, we're there every Tuesday night. And you are more than welcome to come in. You won't see many trains on them, but you certainly can come out there and see us. Uh, we have many of our club officers folks here. And a question. What's the address? Oh, our address at the club is 120 Park Ridge Circle. Just look up Southbound Model Railroad. If you know where uh, the Cricket's Nest is, we're kind of behind it. We're right over there on Country Club Road in South Fork. <coughs>
and we are there every Tuesday night uh, and 7 o'clock on. And you can sit down and see what we're doing. There are really no trains to running right now, but we hope to solve that problem within the next year. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for coming. We want to present Dr. Miller with a framed photograph of our current exhibition, Plans, Trains, and Automobiles, which is this beautiful uh, illustration done by a local artist here. Thank you very much. Very good. The train on the floor, not you can't. I left out one important thing. The train on the floor came from Bocock Strat. For those of you who don't remember that, that was a large train store here in town. Uh, it was a, it was down the corner of, I guess that's Fourth and Spruce, and they had a whole floor of trains in the 1950s. And every kid in town wanted to go there, wanted a train from there, and that's what you got, and that's what that's from. Uh, there are trains over there, and a lot of other places in town. Trains were a big thing in the 50s for kids. And it still runs. Thank you all.